Oh, what good times, what good times. By the way, I do have a uh I do have a, a gentleman Thanos. By the way, this was before Thanos was cool. I have had this shirt. But I have kind of a, a steampunky, like a very glitzy glam Thanos. Infinity indeed. He has got he's got the top hat, the cane, and uh quite the smile. <laughs> All right, so let's make our character thematic for the other side of the coin, which is a way to take the events that have already occurred in our in last week's, right? And then we're going to mesh in, you know, kind of like gears turning. We're going to mesh in this other party and this other uh the, in these other plot points. We killed a huge story NPC that we weren't supposed to with the help of a critical hit from another NPC. We used the critical hit fumble table. Uh, where the victim had an arm sliced off and was stunned for two rounds. Yeah, that sounds pretty generic. I mean, because look, you know, a huge story NPC, that doesn't necessarily mean a, a villain or a foil or a protagonist, antagonist, or something along those lines. An escort mission NPC, there's a lot of different ones. But isn't that fun when <laughs> when those random things happen? Uh, that So that has your... Um... Now, is this... Are you running this so you as a DM are facing a bit of a challenge, Estwild, into, well, what do I do? This this happened. <laughs> or were you uh, are you a, a PC and you're kind of on edge like, oh, where's this going to go? This this might not have, you know, in a meta sense, this might not have supposed to have been happened. You're a player? Okay. That's the link that Ivalon provided there, so. Never sees a problem the players kill things before they're quote-unquote supposed to. It just makes things interesting. I agree. And uh, it, it does show um, how adaptable your, your DM can be. Uh, in my Sunday game, uh, I face something... I, I put a, a riddle in front of my players. And they, they tried answering it. And I, there's a clue system that I gave... You know, everyone gets one freebie clue. You can approach it through any skill you really want as long as you're you're narrating it. And I, I gave them a hint to the riddle. And um, not all of them used their hints. And so instead of answering the riddle, um, they're trying to circumnavigate the gate that holds the riddle and uh, just sort of break in instead of going in through the uh, the intended way. And so as a DM, that tests you because you're like, well, all of a sudden, I we I, I had to pause the game and say, I don't know what wall hardness or how many hit points magically work stone has. Um, so if you want to do this, I'm look, I'm I'm running a world, and if you're seeing this as a solution, I I don't necessarily have a problem with it. I just don't have those stats immediately available in my noggin. And uh, so we, we broke on them trying to break into this area past the, the riddle guarded gate. <laughs> All right, as we make this character number one of five, if you remember, there's a 25% chance that we'll make a Volos character who is loyal to the Empire for this other side of the coin. Uh, so we're going to roll with this first and determine. 44, nope. So we're getting a normal PHB race. Can make another NPC to fill the role. It's not a big deal. Old NPC would just be his underling or something. Something along those lines. Yeah, th there's always a solution, right? Someone's always waiting in the wings kind of a thing. <laughs> that was actually an epic destiny in 4th uh, in edition. I'm going to roll percentile again for male or female. 71, we have a male. Um, it was, you've become so great that, because uh, all your epic destinies had, if you die, something happens. Either you don't, you, you can come back reincarnated, or you're different, or you turn into like a, an undying swamp thing or whatever. And one of them was, someone who looks remarkably like you has been like your fan and has followed your exploits and will come and replace you in the party. Uh, knowing much of what you know and can wield your weapons because they were such like a devoted follower of yours, uh, even if you didn't know it.
Well, you, you know, Ivalon, it, it just, it, it's DM's choice. It's a tool in the belt of the DM. And if the DM is not comfortable deviating from the path in the mod, then uh, you might have an event like this. You know, where, where Torchic said, you know, someone comes and, and takes the place and fills that slot as an NPC. Hey, hey, Tricy, thank you very much. The god, well, Tricy, you should see me Googling. Oh, it's beautiful. All right, so we have a male character. Now we're going to roll a D10 because it was not a Volos this time, though it could be for this week. We're going get, to get a number four. One, two, three, four. We have a Human. Let's roll the D10 again. This is Evens, and so we're getting a standard Human, which is plus one to all abilities. You are medium-sized as a Human. Two percentiles will give us our alignment. 2167. That is going to be neutral good. <clears throat> Bubonic wanted to get the hardcover of Genesis. Uh, it's hard to carry rule book and read it while on a 10-inch tablet. Torchic says maybe the old NPC was a friend and the new guy is, the, is an enemy. Doesn't matter if the players stay immersed. Uh... If the players want immersion, Torchic, it is important to keep it. But uh, maybe... Mm, it's really going to be circumstantial to the tabletop. Every game is different. You know, if if Estwild ran Tomb of Annihilation, Ivlon ran it, you ran it, and I ran it, even with the same, even with the same group of friends, even piloting the same characters... Each Tomb of Annihilation instance is going to be different. Uh, Ith, hello! I hope that you've had some fun with your Barbarian, even if it's just like researching, contemplation, maybe you sketched him out or something. Uh, but yes, we are making character one of five for the campaign this week. Uh, every week we generate uh, effectively a new campaign for your consideration and for you to follow along and learn the, the, the trade secrets and tricks and tips. Um, and we're just beginning making a new character. Bubonic human, a true fighting class would be nice. Fighter, ranger, paladin, barbie. Uh, no blooming bards this week, please. Gods of fate, no bards. <laughs> At the end of the maid uh, RPG session, before you left, you got a pet kitten. As the maid? Uh, yes, Tin Cat has the most NPCs in made so far. <laughs> oh, I got you, Torchic. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. No problem. No problemo. All right, so we have a we have a human, and is of level. Let's find out with a percentile roll. We're going to be generating a, let's see, 14 is level 5. We're generating a level 5 human. Now, if, as you're watching, you'll notice the way we're generating this character is different than the quote-unquote official way that we that we did your Ith the Fifth Barbarian last week, uh, which was by the book, okay? Norton, hello, well met. Norton kind of gives that that very... Maddie, and then just what? Why is there an ellipses after that? Uh, okay, this character is going to have the opportunity to get one ASI or ability score improvement, aka a stat bump. Let's find out if he takes it or if he's going to get a feat instead. 21, nope, that's too low. He's going to take the stat bump. Now we're going to generate a 13-sided die and give him a personality. Well, I mean a personality too, but a background specifically. Number 12, this is a soldier. Okay, and there are different types of soldiers. Specifically, if we look here, there are, D, uh, there are D8 different types of soldiers. Let's roll it. Number 6. 
What is a number six soldier? I don't know, and it doesn't matter right now. This is merely a placeholder. So don't worry, we'll we'll get to it. Now, bubonic one. This is where we find out. <laughs> you want one third of the classes here. Will you get it, or are we gonna roll a two and get another bard? <laughs> <laughs> oh. If I'm looking for a 5e player's handbook to refer to, can I find the full thing on the D&D website? Um you can um Yeah, you can refer to parts of it here. You can refer to parts of it on D&D Beyond. Though you would have to end up getting a, uh, a player's handbook if. Now, I will say if you invest in one, I mean, your local comic or game store might have it. Heck, your local library might even have a copy. If you get a player's handbook for yourself, that has that's like 90% of D&D right there in that one book. And if you do get it, make sure you come back here and I will make sure that you get a return on that investment. I understand it can be inconvenient. It could put, you know... People want to hold money aside for schooling or car payments or whatever. Um, look, there's a lot of entertainment options out there. If you choose to invest in D&D, and I'm saying this both as a player of D&D and as a retailer of it, uh, as a retailer of it, uh, owning a game store myself, that means it's part of my responsibility to you as a customer to make sure you are enjoying your purchase, you understand it, and you're getting the full value for every penny you paid for that book. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did catch that, Evelyn. That was one of, I think, one of the last things, um, because uh, Dark Wolf was a part of a secret society or a, like a secret uh, political faction or something. Amazon can have good deals on handbooks. That's true. Um, and you know what? I buy stuff off of Amazon. I will throw my, my hat into the arena and say, if you do have a local game store and they are worth your, they're worth your, your time and attention, um, you know, look, support your local business, but that's your choice. And I'm not going to make anyone feel guilty because I buy stuff off of Amazon myself. Um, if you wanted, uh, if you wanted, by the way, to get kind of, well, the rules and uh, only spend about 20 or $25. If you get the starter kit of D&D, you'll get a dice set, the rules, and a starter campaign called The Lost Minds of Fandelver as well. Coffee Cat, buy local, support your community if you can. And you know what? If you uh, if you do not have a uh, a local game store, um, if you don't have a local game store, and you're interested, you can send me um, you can send me like a private message or something. And again, I will make sure that you are getting full value for the handbook, and uh, I can I can I can help you out there. <laughs> Norton and old face pause. <laughs> No, 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 I understand. And, uh, Rikon, I and I even tell people the I, I tell people the same uh, the same thing. If if there's something you want and I don't have it here and you want it super immediately, you have you have options. I'm not going to begrudge you for uh, for pursuing whatever fits your lifestyle the best. Because look, again, we have other things that we need to do, right? We got bills to pay. We might have families to support, or um, you know, we're saving up for something else, or. You know, we're not sure, so we don't want to put a ton of money into the hobby. So I, I totally get it. Well, Ivalon, we don't really know that. There could be more. I mean, has anyone ever really passed that very high perception check to find a secret door to find more mines? That's right, we're going to make more than one. Remove my snakes. <laughs> they don't like Norton. Um, I don't know what snakes you want me to remove, Norton. I have an Awu in here. There's a coffee cat and a tin cat. Um, 
I kind of like how Wizards is giving the alternate cover books uh, to the game stores. Yep, that's right. Uh, and you know what? They're limited, too. I think I could only get six of uh, the Mordenkainen's books uh, with the alternate cover. And uh, you better believe, even before I take... I, I'm not going to take one for myself. I'm going to make sure that everyone in my community uh, has the opportunity to purchase the alternate cover first. You know what? If you did that for Xanathar's Guide, those things are up to 75 bucks now. Twice, snakes got bitten. Oh, no. Someone give Norton some anti-venom. All right. Sorry, uh, Bubonic here. I, I, I just paused shy of hitting this golden button and determining which of the classes this character is going to be. Twelve. A wizard. And what kind of wizard? Well, there are D8 schools of wizardry. Five. Evocation. We have a we have a human wizard. Evocation. Ooh, we're we're throwing fireballs for days. Oh, I didn't open the right one. All right. Yeah. Well, th that doesn't matter. So here we're looking at the um, at the human stat line for height, weight, etc. Humans begin at four foot eight, and we're adding two d ten inches. We're adding eleven inches. Uh, that is going to put us at uh, five foot seven. There we go. We're taking the same eleven, and we are going to multiply it by two d four pounds. So four, we're adding 44 pounds to 110, which is the base weight. So he is 154 pounds, just, just his dry weight, right? He gets up in the morning, he's got his skivvies on before he puts on his wizard robe and hat and, uh, and his backpack for adventure time. Uh, this is what he weighs. Now we come down to how old is he? We're going to roll a percentile and find out. In the 92nd, oh, this is a venerable, a very venerable wizard. Now, venerable humans are between 65 and 75. Whoops, that was 2d10. Uh, well, I'll take the first result and we'll leave it where it lies. Maybe there's a d10 I could use for something else. Uh, so he is going to be 70 years old. There we go. Yeah, all right, so maybe there's not a uh, another 10. But still, that would have been the first one we rolled, and we're going to stick to it. All right, we do not need the random roll guide anymore, um, though we will need to generate a few more numbers. Every background allows for two personality traits. So in this case, this is going to be four and two. Again, these are placeholders. And 3d6 will determine the other parts of his personality. 3, 2, and 5. There we go. Blaster Wizard, yep. Coffee Cat plays a divination. Ooh, the divination ability for wizards is... Mwah. Oh, it's so good. With my luck, the deck would give me good items, says Norton. Uh, so, Human Soldier Wizard, I'm thinking about the Malazan book series now. Unfortunately, I'm not familiar with that Estwild, so I'm not able, not able to make a connection. Can you give a little bit of a blurb on that? Wait a second, I have a card that I pulled last time. Undo that snake bite. It never happened. So, that talk about anti-venom. Anti-bite. Avocati confirmed. Emote suggestion is up, says Mr. Plunderloot. Oh, yes, that's true. Um, oh, and the story's continuing on here. <laughs> I don't know what I should have expected, but this is it. <laughs> so th this is uh, <laughs> th this is what you believe uh, a Twitch emoticon for us should be. Is <laughs> a, a killer avocado. Ah, Estwild. 
I'll tell you welcome here too to be meta. Arugula salad! Oh, it's been a while. And if I'm remembering correctly, even after all this time, arugula salad, your favorite dressing is balsamic. A balsamic vinaigrette. Am I correct? Uh-oh, Norton's going to go for the deck of many things. The Void. Well, you can say hi to Dark Wolf. <laughs> a knoll and a wolf walk into the Void. I'll be here all week. Pretty much, actually. Uh, yeah, if people actually remember to use their dice, that's true, Evelyn. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's crack open our, uh, PHBs to Chapter 4 for, uh, backgrounds. I enjoy doing this first, uh, as you get a, a lot more flavor for your character this way. What did they do before they were an adventurer? So we're gonna go alphabetically, Guild Artisan, Hermit, Sage, Sailor, and Soldier. Oh yeah, that's true. Norton got stuck in the void for a while. No one could rescue him. That's a that's good uh, good memory, Ivalon. Yeah, I knew it, Arugula. I got you. All right. So, what are we gonna learn about our character by looking at his background? Well, he's a soldier number six. What does that mean? Ah, he was a quartermaster. <clears throat> Quartermasters, um, well, if there is anyone out there with, uh, with other military experience or history experience, and you'd like to share what it meant for you, quartermasters to me are people who are sort of camp commanders, right? They're logistics, they're organizers. Um, they're not just accountants, but they do track supplies and rations. Uh, they're the ones who make sure that the swords stay sharp. Uh, the men, you know, change their socks because you don't want to get trench, uh, trench foot. Uh, they're organizers of a camp. They issue the gear, says Bubonic. Yep. Supply officer and logistics. Yep. So this is going to look. Hey, you want a supply officer? You got a wizard here who is calculating, and and this stuff is going to help influence the skills also that we'll have access to. Okay, being a soldier, let's zoom in a, a, a wee tit little bit. Skill proficiencies, athletics, right? You got to be able to do a couple push-ups and intimidation. Mage, hello and welcome. Tool proficiencies, some type of a gaming set, and vehicles land. Tool proficiencies. So a gaming set of some kind and vehicles land. Hey, they could be. Look, this is an evocation wizard. I mean, things can happen. You might need to duck and cover or, you know, get uh, get underneath things or... <laughs> Plus, uh, you know that there's... Uh, people have got to dig latrines, too. And we're going to get some equipment. Let's go to our backpack. We get an insignia of rank, showing whatever rank that we've reached as this old wizard. Uh, some kind of a trophy, which perhaps can be a trinket out of Chapter 5. A trophy taken from an enemy. Um, we'll get a gaming set of some kind, perhaps the one in which we're proficient. We'll also get a set of common clothes and a belt pouch with 10 gold. Now, come on, Evalon. The knoll is not a snow globe. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so our specialty was quartermaster. Our feature is military rank. This feature is going to allow us to obtain supplies, um, perhaps uh, a transportation, maybe even information, as long as we're in an area in which our rank and insignia is recognized and honored. Norton is 100% dizzy. <laughs> Oh no, Ivlon is, uh, cackles evilly and juggles the soul container. Uh oh, we're, we're now playing, uh, we're now playing a, a game of hot Noltato, and we're, I guess we're passing it. Okay, now for his personality. Let's flesh him out a little bit, even though it's up here. Number four. I'm full of inspiring and cautionary tales from my military experience relevant to almost every combat situation. And number two, I'm haunted by memories of war. I can't get the images of violence out of my mind. So he has plenty of tales, and unfortunately with those come, you know, memories of tragic loss or of horror, of uh, maybe his own life at some point in time was threatened. How did he get that trophy off of an enemy? You know, did he have... This isn't a, this isn't a uh, spoiler uh, necessarily for Saving Private Ryan, but... It's a war movie in which soldiers are in conflict, and there is a, a f kind of a fresher soldier um, who experiences uh, having a, uh, a knife, uh, having to plunge a knife into someone, and uh, that can leave a that can leave a mark and a memory. For a good read of a Paladin origin story, which includes a basic example of medieval warfare and logistics, check out The Deed of Park, uh, Parksenarian. I think I pronounced that correctly. The Deed of... Oh, of Pack. Paxenarian. Deed of Paxen... Paxenarian. Oh, Bubonic One knows what you're talking about, Dorgrim. He's on it. Paxenarian. Yep. So, you have a recommendation, and look, uh, Bubonic and Dorgrim are, are endorsing it, and look, uh, look, fellow nerds here, you may have a busy book schedule, uh, whether it's audible or physical books, but eh, you might want to look into some recommendations, especially if you enjoy some summer reading. Pax and Arian. His ideal is number three. Independence. When people follow orders blindly, they embrace a kind of tyranny. Next page holds his bond and his flaw. His bond, someone saved my life on the battlefield. To this day, I will never leave a friend behind. Maybe in order to get that ideal, uh, there is an ordered retreat, and he would have been left behind should someone, uh, whoever this person is, not have broken the order and gone back to save him. And so he's been very wary and cautious uh, since that point in time. Um, Estwild says, I'll admit that after a couple weeks of playing in games, now I'm thinking more and more getting some things in order to maybe DM a game sooner than later. Um, I encourage it as well, Ivalon. Uh, you will find a lot of support for that, uh, for being on the other side of the DM screen, so to, uh, so to speak, Estwild. We're in constant need of DMs. And you know what? Being a PC is a good way to get your feet wet, and then... Jump in the deep end by being a DM. It's not as hard or scary as a lot of people may initially think, especially with this edition. Especially. Uh, 
Bubonic one says it's a female soldier who has a few twists and turns. Uh, she really ticks off an evil god who curses her. You started a DM for your family? Yes, that's true. You posted that in Tales from the Tabletop. I, I did re uh, read and comment on it, Bubonic. I thought that was an awesome intro adventure. You did a good job there. Romantic, hello, and welcome back. Are any of you familiar with these flat acrylic stand-up miniatures that I've seen originally from Kickstarter? I'm totally fine with tokens, but I love good visuals. I think I've heard of them, Estwild, but I can't comment on how good they are because I haven't used them. Uh, Norton, I'm checking real quick. Um, okay. So what we'll do is this, Norton. There we go. And his flaw, because we are all flawed creatures, number five. I obey the law, even if the law causes misery. You may say, well, wait a minute. So how does he have independence, but he obeys the law? He could be making a separation between military command and structure and civil law, right? If it's if it's a military unit, well, this is this is like a little tyrant, right? You know, you're a commanding officer, and uh, is just you do this because I say so. Whereas civilian law is built upon, well, presumably, I mean, in, in our modern society anyway, on the consent of the governed, or there's checks and balances. Meanwhile, you know, maybe maybe he had some young officer, maybe he was even like the son of a noble who really just like was fast tracked to a commanding officer position and made a bad call. And he's like, no, I'm I'm not doing that. I don't care if we're ruled over by an emperor. At least he has wisdom and a council to, to pass his degree, uh, his decrees. The mayor still has a council and the people can vote him out or something, you know, whatever is appropriate for the setting. Um, so I'll obey that law. But, uh, you know, you give me. Um, if you if you just follow orders blindly without checking your commander, maybe he even sees checking his commander is a sign of respect to make sure that this commander does know what he's talking about. Um, but you know, not not since that one time, he'll never follow orders blindly again. <laughs> Romantic day. I I really like that emote. That's interesting. Uh, it says, poked around on the website and found the free basic rules. Uh, that should be enough for me to create new characters and such. Yes, it should. I want to practice a few character creations. Yeah, if you go to Beyond If, it doesn't have the full content of the PHB, but it can help guide you through character creation. Um, as well, if you did... Um, yep, yep, you're, you're very welcome to If. Uh, if you need to ask further questions beyond <laughs> what Beyond is teaching you and telling you, we can help clarify that. So practice on Beyond now that you, you're ready to do it yourself, right? We, we made a character and you have training wheels. This time you got to take the wheels off. And even if you scrape your knee, we'll, we'll be here to put a Band-Aid on it. <laughs> Eltrion, hello. Thank you very much, Eltrion. And of course, I, I've got uh, good old like gentleman, gentleman Thanos here. Infinity indeed. <clears throat> All right, this is what being a soldier has given us physically, emotionally, mentally. It's now time to go back and look at everything being a human gives you. 
plus one to all your ability scores. <laughs> you don't have dark vision. It does give you 30 feet of movement, which is 15 climb, 15 swim, zero fly. Um, we are not fly at all. We're medium sized and we do get common and question mark, question mark, question mark. We can speak one other language. Cool, that was our human. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now we're going to come down to wizard, which can be a little bit more complex. I mean, eh, you, you get a lot of options. There's nothing that's necessarily difficult in 5e. There's just different options, and you could say, well, oh boy, do I have to memorize all these? It depends on what you're doing. I mean, you could have options and not use them. It was kind of like what Evelon was talking about with the divination wizard. You can roll those precognition dice, and if you forget to use them in a game, then... <laughs> Uh, it is not a Queen of Hearts, actually. You're going to mess around with it all and continue back uh, if I fall off my bike. All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll have a snack ready for you when, <laughs> when you come back. King says variant humans are greater than uh, humans. Just wants it to be the Queen of Hearts. Off with their heads. Oh, got it. Um, I will show you here in a, in a little bit. Bubonic is recommending a stat spread uh, a stat spread of eight strength, twelve dex, thirteen con, fifteen int, fourteen wisdom, and ten charisma. He's kind of old, but still has toughness. And you know what? Even if you were to reverse it, um, if you were to reverse con and strength, I mean, when you get some of those like old drill sergeants, like they've retired from the, you know, from the army or the Marines or something, and you look at them and you're like, well, they got a pot belly. I assure you, that's not fat. That's just like, if it is, it's crystallized into like a solid, impenetrable uh, dome around the major organs. <laughs> and uh and plus there's the concept of having quote unquote old man strength um so even if we wanted to give him uh, a 13 strength and a, a little less con i think that could very well be appropriate as uh too you know he still does have strength in his bones i don't mind doing it this way either uh so you all out there in Chatland, consider we have a 70 year old evocation wizard who used to be a quartermaster in the military how would you stat him King says, in my best shape, I was still not ever as strong as the fattest guy I know. Coffee Cat, I love my precognition dice as a divination wizard. Yep. So don't, uh, do, you, uh, do you just keep them in front of you? Do you use tokens or some kind of a reminder, Coffee Cat, in order to make sure that you're using them? Or even, you know what, uh, Bubonic, if you wanted to, to keep it and still give him old man strength, uh, we could even switch decks. You know, so he, he may not be as good as, uh, you know, getting out of the way as he once was because of his old bones. He could still be strong, right? If we put like a 12 strength and then we made his decks 8. He routinely moves furniture and has hauled several 500 pound slabs of stone up several flights of stairs, so uh, or so he brags. Coffee Cat, just you write them down in your character sheet. Well, that's very memorable and observant of you, then. Fat doesn't mean weak. Uh, fat can hide a lot of a uh, of, lot of muscles. Like my cousin, who was a beast and weighed four, uh, 420 pounds. Oh, by the way, the... Um You got it, King. Torchic says, um, gonna say my uh, significant other ways uh, about Tree Fitty. 
and seen him lift a queen size temper p oh yeah that, those things Woo. you're like oh it's foam it's gonna be Woo, really heavy <laughs> King says, I was doodling a mascot, but having the spear tongue uh, made it way too lewd. <laughs> well, you, you just hold that, uh, you hold it off to the side, or what you do is you draw it, and then you take that kind of like that mosaic tool, and you kind of, uh, <laughs> or, or you do what they do for certain um, anime drawings, and you just simply put a small black sensor bar over a minute section of the area in question, because apparently that's enough to fully censor the content. <laughs> All right, so let's build our wizard here. <laughs> you're a, a your D6 hit die, and as he is level 5, hey, he has 5 D6 hit dice that he can use to recover hit points in between battles, resting, that kind of a thing. Admittedly, uh, with the way that I that I run D&D, we don't really get to use hit dice all that often. Uh, we get no armor proficiencies. We do get a couple weapon proficiencies. Uh, dagger, dart, sling, quarterstaff for the quartermaster, light crossbow. No tool proficiencies. Intelligence and wisdom are our proficient saving throws. So we're going to fill in the diamonds next to where it says saving throw. Remember, the circles are for skills. Dorgrim, uh, look for ways to allow the players to use hit die for other things unrelated. Um, in 4th edition, we did something with our... Uh, we, we did something along those lines. We made a custom feat where you could burn healing surges for uh for fueling rituals or you know for uh, it would act as like residuum because you're giving up your own life force your own blood even um and so we allowed in some circumstances in fourth edition that uh that your um your healing surges could count as x amount of uh gold towards ritual components and then you could take the heroic tier, paragon tier, or the epic tier versions of those feats, as was appropriate to count for more and more money towards the casting of rituals. Um, and you know, if it became, if it ever became something, Dorgrim, I haven't had my players ask to really use hit die for anything. Um, so it's just sort of been a part on the sheets. Uh, I don't often run combat, and so hit dice are rather. Eh. Rolling dice a lot is indicative of combat heavy gaming. Rolling dice in a minimum is indicative of role playing. Yeah, I do I do way more. It's probably like 80% role play, 20% combat. Maybe 75 25, I don't know. Something somewhere around there. And all the combats we have aren't uh, aren't random either. They're all a part of the story and take place for reasons that make sense within the story. So when Ivalon or others, you know, bring up this weird thing like random encounters or something called a hex crawl, I'm like, are we speaking the same language? Are, are we playing the same game? What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm, I keyed, I keyed. <laughs> My campaigns are pretty story heavy and we don't have a lot of back-to-back -back combat, so hit dice are pretty scarce for us. Uh, but nice thing about a wizard is arcane recovery and a short rest, yeah. Dorgrim, I know what you mean. I plan on letting my players use spell slots and hit dice for other things, uh, but they'll need to discover that it's possible. Yep, that's a very good idea, uh, Dorgrim. Dice rolling of skill checks equals much better than dice rolling of attacks. Yeah, I prefer skill challenges. Um, in fact, a couple combats have just been effectively skill challenges. Um, a couple combats are even purely narrative. I don't, I don't want you to roll dice. I don't care. I want you to tell a story. It, this is a, th this is going to be an interesting fight. Just. Tell me what happens, and I'll react to it, and we'll go from there. Can your ideas beat my idea? And do you trust me to be fair? 
Eltrion says, my old game was pretty much nothing but combat. I actually dropped out of it about an hour ago. Oh, oh yeah, that's right, Eltrion. Uh, well, because the group really likes the, the crawl, you know, the dungeon crawl, kick in the door, kill the monster, move on to the next door, kick it in and kill the monster. And that is a way of playing D&D. I don't want to poo-poo that or say, well, people who like combat in D&D are, you know, swine or something like that. That's That's not the case. Sometimes just having that is, you know, having that is a, it's a good stress relief for you personally or for the, the DM in a storytelling moment. As well, the Tomb of Annihilation hex crawl is kind of fun. If you use all the rules I've seen available for you, it honestly doesn't even need a lot of combat. You're just as likely to die from traversing the jungle. Yes, uh, from my understanding of the environment there, that is true, Estwild. Okay, we're going to get to choose two skills. Arcana, History, Insight, Investigation, Medicine, and Religion. I'm going to present these to you, and let's use his personality to figure out what he's going to be good at doing. Choose two. Arcana, History, Insight, Investigation, Medicine, Religion. Now, I'm thinking... If he was a quartermaster, investigation could be very useful to him as he's trying to track supplies, order supplies, think about what's needed, um, you know, uh, balance the accounts of the of the supplies that you have. Um, insight, you no know, bubonic one here says um, insight and investigation. Insight, yeah, you know, if you want to if you want to speak to your uh, if you want to speak to your subordinates, knowing how they feel. Um, if not that, then maybe medicine and investigation. Either way, you know, we're looking at a wisdom and an intelligence. Uh, you are correct, Altrion. And, and that does dovetail into what Ivalon said as well about resource management. Or is he a quartermaster that makes deals, sleight of hand? <laughs> unfortunately he doesn't well in look anything can be anything so i don't mind creative thinking at all by the book he doesn't have that available to him or maybe he was brought on maybe he was recruited i mean he was a wizard but he wasn't really adventuring so maybe he does have arcana from his wizardly studies Yeah, well, th that's true, but it, it also helped uh, fuel him. But yeah, as a wizard, you know, is he a wizard who's a soldier, a soldier who's a wizard? Do we, you know... Yeah, it, th that's what I was saying, Evelyn. So he might very well have Arcana. Which in some ways is also resource management, right? If you have a component pouch you have to watch out after, um, you need to make sure that you are personally stocked up on the material components you need for your spells. You might make a good quartermaster for the more mundane things. Coffee thought history and insight. Bubonic said insight and investigation. I don't necessarily mind insight either. So maybe um, maybe we do Arcana. Let's let's kind of split the. Uh, we'll go Arcana and insight. You're a dirty variant human character maker. <laughs> yep, we just get plus one to everything. Okay. We're going to get some uh, equipment here. Let's give him a dagger. Let's give him a component pouch because he seems very methodical. Whoops, that's not a weapon. I guess it could be. Component pouch. Um, and it, he's probably going to be more of an explorer. Explorer's pack. And, of course, a spell book, which is maybe also an accounting book. We are going to get spell casting. Not worried about that just yet. Huh, well, here, we're going to just get rid of those. Our class is going to give us arcane recovery. Uh, da -da -da -da. Your choice grants you feature the second. Okay, yep.
Once per day when you finish a short rest, you can choose expended spell, sl spell slots to recover. And that's... Oh, we're getting our tradition, but that's about it for right now. And our tradition was evocation. We are getting to be an evocation savant. We can also sculpt spells. You can create pockets of relative safety within the effects of your evocation spells. When you cast an evocation spell that affects other creatures that you can see, you can choose a number of them equal to 1 plus the spell level. The chosen creatures automatically succeed on their saving throws against the spell, and they take no damage if they would normally take half on a successful save. And he's one shy of learning potent cantrip. Uh, your damaging cantrips affect even creatures that avoid the brunt of the effect. When a creature succeeds on a saving throw against your cantrip, the creature takes half the cantrip's damage, but suffers no additional effect. Yay. So there we go. Now we are going to... Right, we're only 5th level. We're going to get 1 ASI, and everything else is going to be spells. That means our strength is going to bump up to 13, dex to 9, con to 14, int to 16, wisdom to 15, and charisma to 11. The spellbook's fluff can be anything. Yeah, it's it could be an old accounting book. It could be uh, the, the transmutation wizard in my party on... Um, uh, on Sundays, he actually tattoos the spells onto his body as um, as uh, his spell book. Oh, it looks like Evelon has uh, has something interesting as well. His familiar, well, which is a uh, a raven named Zax, um, it, he normally like is a tattoo. And when he's summoned, the tattoo leaves his body and manifests as Zax. Estwild at Ivalon, gross. <laughs> Bloody, uh, Bloody Torchic, I'm having so much trouble with my phone. Catch back. Okay, later, Torchic. Thank you for joining us as you did and for your uh, your input. My divination wizard uses tarot cards as a spell book. Ah, so that yeah, that's uh, that's that's very clever. It is, it is one way not to lose your book, Mage, although I did warn him that, look, things can happen. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I got a follow notice and I forgot to give a shout out. I was so involved here. Uh, roll with disadvantage with an R-O-L-E. I like that. Uh, thank you very much for the follow and welcome aboard and along the journey here with us all. Uh, I told him, look, wizards can normally be stripped of their... Uh, can normally be stripped of their uh, spell books, right? Something can happen, you can be captured, and that means that your spell book can be removed from you. And I told him, I have no problem allowing you to uh, tattoo the spells into your skin. Just realize that if we come to a point where your spell book is stripped from you, that could be quite traumatic. For, who knows, maybe I just... You know, I can cut up his arms and his limbs and it disrupts the spells on his skin. I could, uh, I could, I don't know, like, uh, bruise him so badly he can't read his tattoos. I can remove skin. I can, uh, like, make tat like graffiti tattoos that can interrupt his book in some way. And he agreed to that because, you know, if we're working with cosmetics, as long as there's still function... And the denial of things is uh, is a part of a uh, function of something as well. Then, you know that it is what it is. Ivalon says, "Yeah, it's bearable to him because he sold his soul to an archdevil for the ability to use magic." Yep, tattoo magic, Ivalon. Eh, effectively, think of it kind of um, if you lose. Uh, yeah, uh, so Dark Wolf, he would lose those spells because they're tattooed on him. Um, if you've ever seen something like, uh, have you seen the movie Memento? 
he doesn't have the memory problem that the character there does, but he makes marks for various reasons. Um, I don't know if he's ever been very traumatically injured in that fashion, though uh, what we what we have said is he can't, he's just not using any ink. He still has to use magical ink. And in fact, I told him um, it's not necessarily a problem because he's a doctor. So actually, he hides his tattoos um, because he's a doctor in a hospital. And uh, But he does have to prepare the magical ink in a way that it would be non-toxic for him or that uh, you know would make it compatible with his skin and so because he is using the magic ink necessary for a spell book um you know under normal wear and tear or duress or let's say that he put two points in his strength score and now all of a sudden like oh yeah his skin stretched out a little bit more because he got a little buff um the the magic ink of the spell book is kind of accounting for those uh those circumstances Coffee Cat says, many of the games I've heard of, when a cleric or something uses a healing spell, it is still possible to scar. Well, yeah, because healing doesn't just make you feel better in 100%. It just keeps you from dying. And if you think about it, if you're if you're a frontline fighter and you're constantly getting your bones, like, crushed or your kneecaps broken or your, you know, your head split um, in combat on the front line and your friend is behind you constantly knitting you back together to keep you conscious and alive, I mean, that takes a special sort of dedication to, to subject yourself to constant uh, lethal wounds while being simultaneously knit back together on the fly by someone. Right, Coffee, but if your spells are tattoos and the line is broken, um, it's not necessarily the page. Uh, yeah, because it it is uh, it is the ink like the ink is the consideration, and you know if a tear goes between words or something, look, I can still tape a page back together and you can read it. <clears throat> oh, at fourth level he gets to bump something up. He's older. I almost want to say he'll just bump his wisdom and his charisma up. I mean, he's he's not in a race to be some archmage, the most powerful person in the world. This is really rounding him out, especially as he gets older. He's a storyteller. Uh, he he has a lot of uh, wit and wisdom to share. Oh yeah, that see a lot of people don't think of it like that, Evelyn. I, I agree. Um, yeah, what, what will she get battered up for? And and if, if none of you have approached it like that, think about it. You're a fighter or a paladin, or we'll even use a barbarian because that's the most vivid, right? Most barbarians uh, like tie a loincloth on, say, let's go to war. And they're up there, and they're getting beat with hammers and clubs. You're having your ribs crushed on the front lines of the battlefield. Adrenaline is helping you not feel feelings for the moment. But if you think about it, your blood vessels are are being, uh, you know, are bursting, your skin is splitting, your bones are being broken in combat, in this swirling melee. Your skin is getting charred from fireballs cast by, well, if, if you're not caught in a friendly fireball, then by an enemy fireball. And yet you're still fighting. You're still getting through it because you have someone who's knitting your flesh together, which itself may not be the most pleasant feeling thing. You know, in, in some ways, uh, and you know what, Bubonic, I, I don't know if you necessarily have uh, have any insight on this from being a firefighter yourself. Uh, from what I understand, though, if you suffer third-degree burns, there's almost a mercy there because your, <clears throat> your nerve endings in your skin have also been burned away, so you can't actually feel how you look. So think about it. Your nerve endings are continually being regenerated by healing spells while your body's continually being broken. As a frontliner, you are being racked with pain constantly by both the blows to, to harm you and the spells that heal you and uh, restitch and reactivate those, uh, those nerve endings. 
Romantics, I love playing Evil Fighter uh, for some reason. King says play Song of Swords and take actual wounds to actual locations. You know, Dark Heresy does that as well, King. And uh, they also they also have uh, different... Uh, and so every body part has its own crit chart to see what happens as you take damage, more and more damage to a body part. Yep, bubonic third degree burns, no pain. Um, so yeah, so you're you're lucky, right? Um, if you want another example, think of Wolverine, right? The the popular Marvel uh, character superhero. He continually regenerates. The claws coming out of his body hurt every single time he unsheaths them. Because his body just forms back around him, so when he uh, when he ejects them and retracts them, it hurts. Let alone when he is shot and stabbed and exposed to the sun and all this other stuff. Chemison, hello, welcome. The most painful burns are most minor because your body wants to heal it asap. It, it is a PG-13 stream, Evelyn. Uh, you know, we're not getting into super gore. We're talking about factual medical stuff, and it's all in context. Uh, so even if I am uh, tooting my own horn here, toot toot, then um, I think we have been keeping things... <laughs> How real do you want it to be? Now, of course, do you want magical healing to not leave a scar, and it feels like you're being surrounded by puppies and kittens who are licking your face? Yes, you can have that as magical healing, uh, in your world, you just you, you have the slider. Where where are you setting? <laughs> where are you setting your slider in your campaign? At fifth level, we're getting four cantrips. We're gonna get a couple spell slots also. We have four, three, and two, so we're gonna fill those in here. Uh, let's see. At fifth level, uh, we have a plus three proficiency bonus. Uh, that means that our attack with our intelligence is going to be plus six, therefore meaning our save DC is 14. Uh, this is plus one. This is minus one, two, three, three, and one. You don't know about puppies. I imagine it's more like a soporific or an anesthesia. Well, I so well, yeah. It could it could numb pain, or it could uh, it could synthesize the wonderful feeling of a fluffy pomeranian, uh, just you know, crawling all over you and licking your wounds. You could even scale it. First level cure wounds. Yeah, so first level cure wounds is like... <laughs> uh, is like a quick cauterization, right? It may be a rusty knife, but, you know, you stuck it in the fire long enough to be able to sear the, the flesh back together. Meanwhile, level nine is you have a very bountiful person of your choice who is tending you very intimately and uh, applying, you know applying some kind of a wonderful antiseptic uh, with a, uh, you know, with a, uh, a Pomeranian or, I don't know, some other, like a, a fluffy poodle or a kitten is, uh, you know, rubbing all over your wounds and your body, and you're like, oh, this is the best thing ever. I could get addicted to this. Derek, hello! If you want to make it really real, if it does give you a euphoric effect, you'd have uh, healing junkies. Yep, you are correct, Ivalon. Plunder loot, I have lots of bottles of antiseptic. <laughs> That's right, I'll purify my <laughs> I'll purify myself from the inside. His strength saving throw is one, but he gets a four for athletics. We're just gonna copy and paste. Dun, 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 dun. Constitution's two, not Q. And we're gonna get a six saving, six arcana. Three, 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 three. <laughs> six and six. <laughs> and then one, one, four. One and one. There we go. That was easy, right? Antisepsis, you mean? Derek, no one wants to feel cure wounds from a disciple of Loth, for instance. I cast Johnny Walker Gold level five. <laughs> 
<laughs> so your spell slots are like pints and quarts and <laughs> and stuff, plunder loot. Yeah, and, and that's true, uh, Derek. Uh, you even brought up something. Uh, the way that a spell manifests can be different depending on uh, depending on the source of the magic. Um, if you're flavoring a curing spell from a priestess of Lolf, that might feel like, I don't know, well, if you want to describe how you make it feel, but I would imagine... You could have it be, it feels like spiders are crawling under your skin and sewing it together with their silk. Um, you cast Bacardi level 151. <laughs> um, whereas if you get maybe uh, an athletic god, like a sports god or you know something like that, a gladiator god, it feels kind of like a slap patch. Like, come on, get back in there. You know, you get a good game on your, on your, um, on your ruptured flesh. He just goes, come on, get in there, get in there. Work it out, you know, like a, a, like a quick little muscle massage or something. Spider sewing you up, says Bubonic. Yeah, you know, it, it brings a lot of personality. It probably is painful. It's like a localized venom that burns away the wound and leaves it whole. But it's even more painful at first. Oh, yeah. So it it does. It'll guarantee you're not going to get infected, and it'll it'll cure you. But you gotta you gotta uh, destroy the any infection or dirt that's gotten in the wound. Passive perception is ten plus your perception modifier, so thirteen in this case. Initiative is going to be a minus one. He he just ain't what he used to be. His armor class is nine. Hit points. Well, you get that full six at first level and then you get every level after first which is going to be four right because he's level five so at first level he gets full and then four more makes five four times half plus one in this case that's going to be four plus every level so all five so five x you get your constitution bonus so here we go we have 6 plus 16 plus 10. So we have 26 plus 6. We have 32 hit points for this wizard. Our dagger, uh, we are going to get to bonk people with it or uh, stabity stab at a plus 4 because we can use strength plus proficiency. Um, dagger, you can use dex. It is called a finesse weapon, but our dex isn't as good. This is going to deal 1d4 1D plus your strength modifier, since that's what we're using in damage. And it is piercing damage. Okay. Well, you know what? Uh, he needs a name, by the way, if any of you have a name suggestion. But aside from uh, picking out his spells... We have a finished character. And we can pick out his spells uh, even a little bit later tonight in part three. But I'm going to need to get up and, uh, and make something uh, for myself to, uh, to eat and drink. And then we'll come back and we'll work on character number two. Oh, by the way... Spells prepared equals your wizard level plus your intelligence modifier, meaning he can prepare eight spells, right? He oh, he is level five, and he has an int modifier of plus three. And that's within all of the tiers of magic that he knows. At first level, by the way, he gets six spells in his spell book. Every level thereafter, he gets two free spells. Now, what's interesting about wizards is that uh, you can technically learn every wizard spell there is if you invest the time and the gold and you, you go on the journey to find them. I suggest writing down the level and even the location or merchant or some other note about when and where you get the spells. So you could remember, maybe even go back or bargain with the same person again. And if your DM ever has questions, then you can 
uh, you can show them the sheet and say, no, 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 look, it's all here. Don't worry. Look, I bought it. I paid the full amount and I bought it from this NPC in this town. If you want, if you like going that, that far into depth with it. Uh, Derek says, uh, Larshali's, if I pronounce that correctly, uh, Cure Wounds, which is uh, his uh, drow Lolf priestess, is legs of spiders push out from under the skin, interlocking and forcing the skin back together, and your severed tendons seem to sprout silk to connect uh, one another. It's an agony like burning the wound shut, but it does the job. Uh, you love some Cure Wounds body horror? So yeah, we're, we're talking about um, different ways that you know, do your cure wounds leave scars or do they even hurt? Because if you're simultaneously on the front line getting your bones broken by flails and having your friend behind you uh, knitting them back together, even if you don't have cosmetic effects or, you know, uh, deity specific manifestations, just think about it. And, you know, or and that's how real, well, I, 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 it's always weird saying the word real in a fantasy campaign. Where do you want that slider to go, right? Do you want every cure spell level one through level nine to feel like, you know, puppies and kittens are, are crawling over you, tickling you with their tongues and, and making you uh, pure and whole again? Or do you want the agony of feeling not only every injury, but yourself healing from every injury and it leaves scars because all cure wounds does is it just keeps you fighting. It doesn't make you look pretty. Coffee cat, Derek, I like the way you think. <laughs> Uh, necromancer slash clerics cure wounds might be the wound rotting off, which is trippy when you think about it, but fascinating to describe. Yeah, so it, it could bubble up and then like just like slough off, and then you get that like that big sort of like pucker of pink fresh skin, even if it looks like a divot in the arm or something. Uh, Suit you, I feel bad because I've been focusing on all these business uh, uh, crud. I haven't been focusing on this. Hey, it's fine, Suit you. Look, you, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, we're being a bunch of nerds sitting at a table talking D&D. Uh, no, you, you didn't miss it. I put one into Wisdom and one into Charisma to round those up, asked Wild. Oh yeah, Bubonix got it there. Making your uh, spells cosmetic, describe them because it makes them game better. It does. Instead of just saying, I cast Magic Missile. Well, what do your Magic Missiles look like? They're a manifestation from you. I bet if I did a random, uh, I'd get bit by a snake again. Uh... Uh, Gidlock. Name suggestion, Jocks Flintlock. Oh, all right. I, I can put that down for a name, uh, Gidlock. Does that name have meaning for you? Uh, does this remind you of a PC that you ran for? Or did have you thought of some kind of a, a background for uh, why this person is named as such? Uh, I like exploring that as well. And Dark Wolf apparently made some art from the uh, the made RPG session a little bit earlier today. <laughs> and so this was before it was spilled all over her, and one of the maids ended up licking it off of her dress. Correct. <laughs> Ivalon wishes to change the name um, that Gidlock uh, made to Flox Gintlock. Norton may need to retire from adventures. No. Norton, we need you on the front lines. Storm, my friend Gabe drew my most recent character and his pet, so I'll introduce you to Roshak the Minotaur Barbarian and Kevin Goristro, who lives in a bag of holding. <laughs> That's that that is very cute here. I'm gonna add a little uh, a little fun emote here. Uh, what are we gonna add here? Is there a waffle? Is there a waffle emote? No, there's pancakes. I'll put a pancake here.
Nope, never played D&D. &D, just thought it was a cool name. I would assume that Quartermasters would have distributed some flints or powder back in the day. All right. Hey, that's... And you know what? If you've not played D&D, &D, welcome. You're at the right place, though. While we are speaking D&D, &D, uh, I, I don't know how long you've been kind of lurking around listening to the conversation, but number one, thank you for stepping up and participating in it, and, uh, and two, for your creative thoughts. Um, so, Gidlock, if you have any questions about D&D &D or role-playing more broadly, it doesn't have to be just about the D&D &D uh, system. Welcome. You're among friends. Norton is getting bit by snakes and now mauled by scarecrows. Oh, I know. Poor Norton. You're just not having a good day. You are in the void earlier, too. We need a guinea pig, Norton. Sometimes Dark Wolf doesn't make us laugh hard enough. <laughs> uh, well, Gidlock, please do stick around. I'm gonna get up and take about a 10 minute break. I gotta fix a snack and something to uh, something to drink as well. Welcome, and uh, thank you for being a part of the stream as well. Uh, I I don't I, I there's uh, so many people with a lot of experience. Though it is non-D&D players, you know, first-timers, newcomers like you, who are also a very important part of the channel. Um, not only because we can help answer your questions, but you provide a unique perspective to people who've been playing for a while that maybe we never would have considered. Uh, and in fact, that, that's why I asked for your, uh, for your, well, what's the reasoning behind the name? I don't know how many other people out there would have had the same reasoning, but you brought it to the table. I think it makes sense, and we have Jock's Flintlock. Hang out for a bit bedtime soon, though? Okay, I'll, well, I'll be back as soon as possible, and we'll go into character number two. So if you're feeling inspired, um, then you can participate in that as well. Suchu, oh, you're gone then. Sleep is needed for you. Take care, Suchu. See you later. Well, Thursday specifically, right? We gotta still get through uh, Curse of Strahd. Yeah, let's not pick on Norton the Knoll. Norton, Norton has had a bit of a bad day. He's been trapped in the void. Snakes and scarecrows have gotten to him so far, um, so he needs uh, Norton needs a little bit of time to uh, uh, to uh, rest up, recuperate, and he he needs some kind of like a big like I'd say go get him tiger, but he's a knoll. <laughs> um, so let's let, let's have like a big rally for Norton here, okay? Mage has to go to bed too. No problem. It's a good break point, right? It is for me as well. Romantic Day wants a Warlock? Hey, there's a 1 in 12 chance you'll get one, Romantic. <laughs> okay, I will BRB, AFK, LOL, question mark?
So I was walking back with my soup. And of course, my spoon is diagonal in the bowl. Well, so it's like a square shaped, like a, a plastic ware, right? Like Tupperware. And <laughs> what do you think happened? <clears throat> oh, let me see what happens real quick. Ooh, just just under the 10 minutes, like I said. So I have some... Now, Norton, I don't know if this is going to entice you back. I have some uh, freshly made uh, French onion soup. Lots of beef. And I still have, from a trip to Outback Steakhouse, a little loaf of that, that wonderful bread that they give you that I'm going to be using to sop up this soup. However, if it just so happens that uh, I spill some of its uh, beefy, almost gravy-like goodness, um, I could use a friend. Uh, let me get out of this as background music, and then I'll show up on stream, and I guess it'll be kind of like a social eating slash character building. Hmm. Hiccup. There we go. Now let's come back to things here. Hello. Mm mm. Very good stuff. No, you can't jump up here. Thank you for offering. There is a dying wolf. Looks like King needs to put her out of her misery. Hands Norton a rat present. The claw god and lieutenant of bah Bahomet. Uh, give that to your god. I'm sure he will give you some happy happies. <laughs> you know, though, Bubonic, what Norton might need is a good challenge. Right? Not just a gift. I mean, he might accept the gift, but he might want to earn a gift. That said, what are you willing to give up in a fight? I was cut. No, you can't jump up here. He smells the beef and is like, I want to be up here. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, I know Norton. Norton uh, hurled a spear over at uh, our Awu. Ended up getting injured. And I think she kind of slunk off to lick her own wounds. Norton, Norton the Null rejects all of it. Be gone. Leave me. Leave me be. Norton not need you. Um, yep, walks out, doesn't look back. The Awu tries to, um, to recover, uh, her kind of cousin, I guess, right? Wolves and hyenas. Norton says, for real, everyone in here has been harassing me, even the mods. Please don't jump up on my desk, buddy. Well, <clears throat> as Norton the Knoll is sitting uh, by the stream, and, uh, and contemplating, <clears throat> pardon me, 